Hi everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Um, it's been a while since I did a video. I've been spending some time in France and I'm back in the UK for a short while. Uh, obviously it's raining, um, which is why I thought I'd, I'd get some stuff done in the workshop. Um, so first things first, the Raid Garage tank. Um, the saga continues sadly. Um, the first tank leaked uh, profusely. Um, Raid Garage sent me a second tank. Um, the second tank leaked in exactly the same way um, and I mended it, I say mended it, um, with some Tiger Seal um, and it appeared not to leak. However, I did go back to Raid Garage because uh, to my mind, I know what the problem is. Um, so let me, let me show you what, what I believe the problem is. So here is the one of the old tanks. Okay, now ignore the, the tiger seal around it. it. It shouldn't be there. It should look like that. Okay, that's how it arrives. Um, now you can see when you look in there that you can see a bit of the plastic around the rim of the metal insert. And my theory on this was that when you screwed the, uh, the bolt in to the metal insert, it would hit the plastic and, and basically prise the metal insert away from the plastic tank, there, thereby compromising the seal. Okay. Now, I explained this in great detail to Raid Garage. Um, I mean, I'm not a qualified engineer, but I'm a very experienced motorcycle mechanic, and I sort of know what I'm doing. So I explained all this, and they said, and I quote, your, because what I basically said was, sorry, is that the plastic, the hole in the plastic tank should be bigger than the hole of the, than the diameter of the metal insert. So that when you put the bolt in, it goes into the metal and doesn't go anywhere near the plastic. They said, and I quote, you're right, the hole should be bigger. OK, so we will we'll amend a tank. We've got a new design coming along. We'll redo it and we will send you one of the new tanks. So got back into the UK yesterday and got home and waiting for me was the Raid Garage tank. So how does it look? Let, let's see. Let's see how they've done with my advice, which they agreed with. So here's the tank and you can see, even with the slightly blurry uh, focus, that the tank, the hole in the tank is actually now even smaller than it was in the previous tank. So what's gonna happen is when I screw the, the bolt in, it's going to hit that plastic because you are what you are you either need a big a bigger hole in the plastic or you need a shorter bolt so that it will only go into the metal thread and not touch the plastic. I mean I explained all this in my in my email to Ray Garage, which which as I say they agreed with. Um, so now they've sent me this. Uh, which is basically going backwards. I, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure when they quite clearly understood what the problem was that they've, gi they've given me a design that is even worse than the first one. Anyway, to, to be honest, I have now got three tanks from Raid Garage in my workshop and I only wanted one. What I'm going to do is, um, th this is the bolt uh, the, the, that goes into the banjo and um, like thus. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm basically, because I've got two or three of these now, I'm going to cut some of the thread off so that it then goes into the into the metal insert and does up and I can uh, torque, uh, torque it to the right setting and it will not touch the plastic. Um, so I'm going to get on with that now and then you can join me in a minute. Well, probably several minutes. See you in a bit. Right. Um, bolt for the banjo fitting has been cut down. Um, I've only cut a tiny, tiny amount off of the uh, thread because it, it's not really that much pushing on the plastic, I don't think. But anyway, I've measured it and it, uh, it should now not push on the plastic of the tank. So that's it. I did think, <coughs> I did think about getting putting two an extra washer on the fitting because uh, I've got these um, washers with a rubber seal on the inside. But I just thought, well, they're not designed for that. 
so I don't really want to end up having a leak because I've put another washer on. So I, I did I did go for the cutting the thing and it's it's gone on fine. Um, you know I cut it. So obviously that much has come off plus the width of the uh, disc on my angle grinder. So um, next thing to do is fill it up with fuel. Um, it's, I'll put it in the bike. I mean, to be honest with you, I'm becoming mildly bored with raid garage tanks. Um, all I want to do is I want to buy something. It does what it says it's supposed to. It works and I can get on with my life. Having now had three of them, um, I thought, well, maybe I should fill it with fuel and test it. And you think, well, why, why would I need to do that? Why should I need to test it? Why should I need to test everything before it, you know, you sort of finally nail it down? So I'll put it in the bike. I'm going to put some fuel in. It's all connected. Um, the next thing to go on the bike is the new seat. So um, the, the, I've had the seat completely remodelled um, to give me more arse space where I sit down. I mean, where I stand up, it's still narrow, but where I sit down, there's, it's basically I'm going to spread my weight over a bigger area. This was done by a guy called Tony Archer. Now I did get in touch with, um, I think they're called Concept Seats, um, there, there are two in America that do them, one's called Concept and I can't remember what the other one's called. Anyway, the one that I thought did a, a proper job and, and shaped the seat like this um, there was going to be, well it would have been over 500 quid when I got, by the time it got to me in the UK. Um, Tony Archer up in the north of England did this for £120. Um, obviously it's to be determined how much more comfortable it is but it, it can't be less comfortable than I've been sitting on because you're spreading the weight over a bigger area so I'm going to put some fuel in the bike get the seat on and then I'll show you the next exciting thing for the Husqvarna so don't go anywhere right tanks filled with fuel I'll show you the level I've put it at so you can see it is absolutely at the top no air bubbles i leaned the bike forward because normally a little air bubble accumulates here there's no air bubbles anywhere so i'll look at it in a few days and if it's not in broadly the same place i'll know i've got a leak so hopefully fingers crossed there is no leaks with it and this is the actual final solution third time lucky so seats on Fuel, fuel tanks full. The the last thing really with the Husky, because um, obviously the fork seals are all done now, as, as you might remember from previous video, is the wheels. The wheels. Now, um, I had a problem with trying to make the original wheels tubeless, so I splashed out um, somewhat extravagantly on these. Um, these are Han wheels. They've got Takasago XL rims and the most beautiful. Um, machined hubs and they come tubeless um, so that they, they've got a valve in already um, they, they, they are tubeless already so I won't need to worry about them you know converting them to tubeless so my good friend at, at uh, Triumph Tech is going to change over the uh, wheel uh, the tires for me um, next week and then these will go back on the bike and then the Husky is well it should be finished um, you know, I, I, the fuel tank should be working perfectly, the seat should be comfortable, the wheels will be tubeless, I'll have new Dunlop Trail um, something or Trailmaster, is it Trailmaster? Tires on. <clears throat> it should be ready to go, ready to go on adventures, um, which I'm very much looking forward to. And I suppose the other bit of news in the workshop is there is a new bike in the workshop. Yes, indeed. Um, having said three bikes is more than enough, I've now bought another one. <laughs> um, so the, this one is living in France, though. That, that's the difference. So it will be a bike with a French accent. Obviously, it's left-hand drive. But I'm used to left-hand drive because my Land Cruiser is left-hand drive because I bought that in France as well. So over the next um, sort of 12 months or so, we're going to be spending more time in France. And I thought it'd be a nice idea to have a, an enduro bike that's dedicated to off-road tracks, um, not the sort of on-road, off-road, which the 
uh, Husqvarna is, is very much intended to. You know, the reason why I bought the Husqvarna was because it's got longer legs so that if you're doing the Tet, for example, which um, I've done some of, you know, you might ride sort of 20, 30, 40 kilometers between stages and you'd want to get there, really. And the, the Husqvarna is brilliant for that. So what, what I've done is I've bought a rack for the Land Cruiser, which I can bolt onto the tow bar and it can carry up to 120, 125 or 122 kilos, I think. Well, the, the new bike, because I know you're dying to know, <laughs> is a Gas Gas uh, EC300 uh, two stroke. Uh, so it's a, 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 a throttle body injected two stroke water cooled uh, enduro bike. I'm buying it from a garage in uh, just in Limoges. I've bought bikes from them before. Uh, they're a great garage, good service. And the plan is to pick that up in about 10 days time. It'll be registered in France and I'll be using that. I'll either be putting it on the back of the Land Cruiser and, and, and going off and, and finding some trails or I'll be riding from, from where we're staying. Um, you know, there are trails and forests around where we're staying. So um, I'm really looking forward to using that. And I'm particularly looking forward to basically just putting it on the back of the Land Cruiser and driving down to Spain. You know, I mean, Spain is what, four hours away, five hours away by road, just going and, and riding some trails. I mean, it'll be fantastic. I'm really looking forward to that. Anyway, that's about it for now. Um, I will be making some videos of stuff that I'm going to be doing in France. Um, so even though I won't be um, necessarily based in the UK full time, um, I will be still doing some videos. So please um, subscribe if you'd like to hear more of me uh, rambling on in the workshop, even if it's in a French accent. Um, I mean, if you don't do left hand drive, I mean, what can I do? You know, so that's it for now. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up and uh, I shall see you next time. So bye for now.